remember verse 19, that is considered to be his wrath because why? It is, he's feeding her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So Babylon that's receiving this drink of judgment, the reason why she deserves this drink is because she was drinking up the blood of martyrs before. So God makes it say, okay, so here's something else for you to drink. And we're going to see that in Revelation 17, okay? We're going to see that in Revelation 17. Look at verse 20. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. So notice here, the islands are gone, and the mountains are no longer seen. Do you see that? The mountains are gone, and the islands are not seen. So this is some sort of earthquake. This is some sort of earthquake. This earthquake just causes so much dest uh, destruction around the cities that even practically islands are being sunk and then the mountains are actually just being destroyed. Now this can result, verse 20, this can result from the earthquake at verse 19 or... Or what it could be happen is that it's just God divinely doing something, just taking away the islands and mountains. And that is possible because of verse 21, because God divinely sends out the hail. So either, so here's the thing, either at verse uh, 19, 20, and 21, when God pours out his seventh vial, God is in, uh, divinely letting, making three things occurring, or... It could be that it could be one divine intervention where God sends this earthquake that the hail and then the lightnings and thunders and the island and mountain fleeing away all ties to the earthquake. So it could be either or. It could be either or. Verse 21, there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. So <laughs> not only do the cities get wiped out, but man, they're just receiving no mercy. Because hail is falling out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent over here. Woo, that is big over here. If it's a weight of a talent, it's going to be 10 pounds pretty much, 10 to 12 pounds. That's the idea of a talent. Man, imagine like, a, uh, imagine like baseballs falling out of the sky and hitting you like that. That's not pretty, man. So the weight is a talent, and that would approximately go for about 10 to 12 pounds. Uh, let me know if I'm being cut off. I know that sometimes I can go too far at the side, so let me know if I'm being cut off. All righty. So when God sends hail out of the skies, It, will, it can go for about 10 to 12 pounds. Now, these people get hit and they still will not repent. Can you imagine that? We're going to read that. Let's keep reading over here. There fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. Out of heaven comes out hail. Every stone about the weight of a talent. Notice it calls it stone. So it's going to feel like that. And it's like about 10 to 12 pounds by the weight. And men blaspheme God. See, they didn't repent. They get mad at God. They blaspheme him. They get upset at him because of the plague of the hail. This plague hurts. So that's why they would blaspheme him. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. Of course it's exceeding great. It's horrible. It's terrifying. It hurts. Now, you might wonder, why would mankind do that? But that's not so hard to figure out as your past, as I mentioned before. Uh, remember, I usually say your pastor <laughs> because it's a habit of a term of endearment for people in my church and people online who want to feel belong uh, in this church. So please excuse me if I say your pastor. I'm trying to break that habit. But I mentioned to you before that it's not a surprise because look at today when natural catastrophes happen, people say, why, God, did you allow this to happen? That's right. And they get upset at God. Even say believers. Isn't that amazing? So this is not too far-fetched when God sends his judgment. People are going to get mad and upset at God. They're not looking at God's point of view of repentance. That's why. 
So when catastrophes happen, what you got to be thinking about is repentance. That's what you got to be thinking about. Uh, before I continue on, let's return to verse 16. I forgot to mention this part. The Lord sends down his wrath at a place called Armageddon. And this location will be described throughout the Bible. And there's a lot of verses, actually. There's a lot of verses that sh talk about Armageddon. We're going to look at first at Judges chapter 5, verse 19. We're going to look at the book of Judges chapter 5 and verse 19. Notice that the location, the geography, and the map is provided so that you can understand more specifically where this area will take place. Look at Judges chapter 5. And we will read verse 19. So because there are so many mentions of Armageddon over here, remember Armageddon is tied to what event? The second coming of Christ. Now, I showed you so many verses about the second coming of Christ already, correct? Combine that with the mentions of Armageddon, it builds up even more verses about the second coming of Christ. That's why I mentioned to you before the main theme throughout your Bible is what? The second coming of Christ. That is undoubtable. And I'm going to show you many verses to prove it. Just on one of the branches of the second coming, Armageddon. Judges 5.19, the kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Taanach by the waters of where? Megiddo. They took no gain of money. Megiddo is... a Another word for Armageddon, and that's actually, it's going to, you're going to see the location of Megiddo around the similar region of Armageddon. They're all tied, basically, they're tied. But what is interesting is that Judges 5 talks about Deborah. Now, Deborah, she is a prophetess, correct? So when Deborah is singing here, she's prophesying. People think that this is referring to Deborah's victory against the Canaanites, but actually, it is mingled with the second coming. Amen. So there's another application. It's not just a historical application of conquering Sisera. It's another application where she's prophesying about Armageddon. That's why Sisera's army <clears throat> is going to be a great type of the Antichrist that you want to know. Another one is 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 29. 2 Kings chapter 23. And then we'll look at verse 29. Notice another mention concerning about Armageddon. In his days, a Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. Now remember, Armageddon is by Euphrates at Revelation 16, right? So we know the geography here. And King Josiah went against him, and he slew him at where? Megiddo. See that? So it's going to be by the location of Euphrates. That's why God dries up the river Euphrates so that they can meet at Armageddon when we look back at Revelation 16. Let's look at another passage. Second Chronicles chapter, uh, Zechariah chapter 12. Zechariah chapter 12. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 12 verse 11. Again, Armageddon is definitely the location where the scriptures believe where the scriptures claim <clears throat> will be the battle of the second coming. Second Chronicles chapter 12, verse 11. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem as the morning of Hadadrimon in the valley of what? Megiddon. Megiddon. So notice that that's why Armageddon, when you keep hearing that uh, phrase from people, you're going to remember that it is a literal location. It has a history throughout our Bible of what? It has a history throughout our Bible of conquest, war, and judgment. You'll see that throughout historically and even prophetically. Let's return to Revelation. <clears throat> Let's return to Revelation. And then we'll look at chapter 17 now. Chapter 17. Now let's look at some interesting doctrines on Revelation chapter 17. Babylon, who is Babylon? That's the question in everybody's mind, right? Who is Babylon? A lot of people think that Babylon is referring to Jerusalem 
And other people believe that it is referring to the United States of America. Bible believers know that Babylon is referring to Rome. Amen. Satan always wants to hide his city so that people don't see it. So people who teach that it's Jerusalem when it should be God's holy city, that's something you better take, uh, you better take careful steps on. When you talk about America, God does not think about America. He says that those nations are like a drop of a bucket to him. And not only that, his wrath is more so upon Rome throughout its past 2,000 years of persecution against the saints. Not just Jewish, but even Christian saints. So obviously his wrath is, has built up against that city. To just uh, dump it on America is overlooking God's justified wrath. Justified wrath. Amen. He has a justified wrath. You can't hide that. You can't cover that up. So be careful of pe other people teaching you that Babylon is referring to a different city rather than Rome, which is, God, which is what God wants people to know. God wants people to know that this is a city where I'm pouring out my judgment. Why? There's a reason behind it. Why don't you look at the history of this city over here? 